Peace, everyone, and welcome to the Drawing Journal. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about self-doubt. So as you can see, I set up an extra camera just uh, to try something new out a little bit. Uh, hopefully the editing won't be too difficult for this video and I can keep doing this in the future. And if you like this setup, let me know what you think. Um, because if nobody likes it, then I don't see any point in doing it. But anyway, so I'm um, still working on this uh, partial portrait. So uh, I'll just get into today's topics. Um, I got a couple questions, so I thought that, uh, yeah, I thought that that would give me something nice to talk about. So I uh, hope everybody had a nice weekend and uh, enjoy the rest of your week, um, of course. And uh, so the first question comes from Mario. Uh, he asked me, uh, he asked me how long I've been drawing. And this is a topic that, this is a topic that I've discussed previously um, in, in much earlier drawing journal. I, could have been even the first or second drawing journal that um, I, I I talked about how long I've been drawing, and uh, so I, I thought I'd just briefly go through the history of of my art and how it kind of evolved to to what it is today. And um, most of the time, when I'm asked this question, I I go all the way back to the beginning, um, and which was first grade. I had I had regular art classes in first grade all the way up through high school, um, so I generally regard that as the time frame in which uh, I've been drawing. However, it it wasn't a consistent um, it wasn't consistent, um, and so let's see I I drew pretty consistently first and second grade. Uh, when I got to third grade. You know, I was learning cursive and fractions, so I uh, wasn't really drawing that much, just being a regular kid for the most part. Um, and then I drew a little bit more in fourth grade, um, even more in fifth grade. Actually, my sister has uh, a book that I illustrated. first book I ever illustrated uh, was actually in the fifth grade, and it was called The Skateboard Scamper. Um, she still has that book. I, I gotta get that book from her um, sometime to show you guys. But um, it's it's about uh, it's about a detective named Taki. I think his name was Taki, uh, detective that skateboarded, and um, yeah, it was it was terrible. It was terribly illustrated. <laughs> the story was awful. But uh, yeah, that's I guess that's the first book I ever illustrated. Speaking of books that I've illustrated, I did um, just finish coloring all of my illustrations for the book that I've been working on. So the only thing left to do is to get those pictures scanned and um, do the final editing on them just to get them ready for publication. Uh, hopefully I'll have that done by next week and it will be ready to be published in not too much not too much longer. Um, it would be a nice project to have in the portfolio and it would be nice to kind of uh, have it finished, have it completed. Um, yeah. So uh, right now I'm just I'm working on the nose on this here. Um, and this portrait's coming along really nicely. I'm, I'm really satisfied with the, the way it looks right now. Um, sorry, I'm kind of getting off topic, but um, I, I will have a time lapse this Tuesday, or not Tuesday, this, this coming Thursday, new time lapse. Um, and it will be the 52nd weekly drawing, uh, which means that the, the weekly drawing series is, is going to come to an end. Uh, that's, that's all that I'm going to do for that series, and I'm going to start focusing on some, some things that are a little bit different um, so yeah you'll want to uh, keep an eye out for the projects ahead for sure and um, anyways so uh, back to how long I've been drawing um, so yeah fifth grade I drew a little bit more sixth grade um, I was 
I was definitely known for drawing. I always had a sketchbook, and I still have some of my first sketches uh, and drawings that I did in, in sixth grade. Um, I even made a little bit of money in sixth grade. No, no, that wasn't sixth grade. That was eighth grade. So I, I first, I, I made my first like twenty dollars, I think, in uh, in eighth grade. Um, but pretty much in, in middle school, I was always known to be drawing. Uh, I can't really say I was serious about it. I avoided drawing people, and I have some older drawings of of um, people that I did, and uh, yeah, they I avoided faces because I was just I was just terrible at faces and I, I never did them never did faces um it was just uh, yeah avoided them at all cost but uh yeah eighth grade i got a little bit more serious uh i changed schools halfway through eighth grade and um went to uh, went to a different middle school and that had like five people like it was the tiniest school i've ever been to and um that's where i got a little bit more serious they had better art class that was the thing um i learned how to draw in perspective like a two-point perspective and then from that i taught myself how to draw in um three-point perspective and I, I played around with perspective for a little while and i still use perspective in my work um, it's an important skill to learn uh, even if you don't do like ar architectural things, um, it's great. It's a great skill to learn. Um, but yeah, I did that. And then when I got to ninth grade, that's when I started to learn how to draw people. Uh, I, to I toyed around with drawing people a little bit in the eighth grade, but it was still terrible. But the art teacher that I had in ninth grade, he, he was really... Um, he was really dedicated to teaching his students anything that they wanted to learn and he was a capable of teaching. Um, I remember he gave me this muscle magazine, which I thought was extremely weird um, as a ninth grader. And um, yeah, he just had me draw like the muscles and stuff. Um, they were terrible. They, I mean, the drawings were still awful, but um, yeah, it taught me a lot and it was, it was nice. Um, it was nice, but uh, yeah. So I, I, I started to draw a little bit more seriously around that time, and uh, then I switched schools again. Uh, I did that a lot growing up, but um, yeah, uh, I I came across another artist that was a couple grades higher than me, and uh, by far better than me at drawing and so uh, I, I learned I learned some skills from him and uh, I have old drawings that I did when I met him and uh, it is very obvious uh, his influence at the time when I when I go back and I look at the drawings that I did uh, because I I was starting to learn to draw faces he was really good at faces but he also had kind of his own comic book style of faces and um, I just straight up copied it for a, a really long time and uh, I have plenty of drawings that that show how how much I copied uh, because um, I didn't I had no idea what I was doing and so I just copied exactly what he did until I developed my own style um, in high school throughout high school I was much more serious about my art um, the art classes were a bit more involved and um, yeah, I got into painting. That's when I first got into painting. Only acrylic painting. I did a few paintings. Um, sold an acrylic painting, actually, my, um, uh, what was it, my sophomore year to a fellow student. Uh, I painted her brother playing football. I don't quite remember how I went about that. Um, one of the other things I, I learned how to use, uh, to use the grid method when I was drawing. Um, and that, that, propelled my artistic abilities quite a bit because I was able to draw things that I accurately, uh, much, much more accurately than I'd ever been able to draw before. And uh, yeah, the grid method, I use that a tremendous amount. Um, I still use it. Um, but uh, yeah, it was uh, a lot of learning in, in that time frame. 
high school time frame. Uh, but it was after I graduated high school that the whole drawing thing kind of went went away. I mean, I had to get a job. Um, and of course I joined the military and which I didn't draw at all. Um, I did a couple artistic things while I was in the military. Um, I did, I did paint my first mural when I was in the military and <clears throat> right near, um, it would be 2008. Yeah. 2008. I drew a little bit, but, um, past that, I didn't really do much. Um, I, I doodle every once in a while. I got into the Zen doodle thing because it, uh, it allowed me to just, just draw mindlessly. Um, and yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty good. Um, and then after I got out of the military, which was 2011, um, maybe one year after that. So 2012, I, I kind of restarted drawing. Um, and shortly after that, I, uh, started my YouTube channel. I started my YouTube channel in 2013 fall of 2013 um and uh just started painting with oil and yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much the story in a nutshell um as far as years go i mean let's say um four years in elementary school three years seven so mm, somewhere 11 and plus three so like 14 years i guess cumulatively like 14 years, give or take a year, um, I've been drawing for, um, but I've only been using colored pencils for two years now, actually just now two years. Um, it's a fun medium. Uh, I would have never, I would have never thought of, uh, colored pencils being so, um, so much fun to, to use, but yeah, I, I've come a long way with colored pencils. I mean, you can see from here that, um, I've come a long way, but I mean, uh, two years ago I bought this set of Prismacolors and the rest is, the rest is history. Um, yeah, so, um, I don't have too much time left before I want to, uh, quit this video. So, um, I will change the, the topic. So the next, um, the next topic is, is self-doubt as an artist. Um, and this is, this is a really important topic. I mean, self-doubt is an artist killer. Like this is the, the thing that kills dreams of being an artist or anything like that. And it's unfortunate because it's something that it's something that every artist is going to struggle with. And it's, Sometimes it's impossible to get through um, without good support, and uh, there's a there's a large art community online that um, is always a good place to go for for encouragement and stuff like that. And um, I would say I would say that the the strategy that I personally used to overcome. Uh, self-doubt as far as being an artist and um because uh anyways yeah so the strategy that i used is basically to stop comparing my work to other people like when i was when i was you know starting drawing and any time that i'd come across somebody that i thought was better than me um it's important to word it that way that i thought they were better than me and even though there would be people that would agree like oh yeah they're better than you um i i stopped wording it that way um that's the first step just quit saying that anybody is better than you at anything because um because art isn't it art, art shouldn't be comparative like that you know and especially you comparing yourself to somebody else um you should you should only you should only be creating art for the pleasure of creating it and not to it's not a competition it, art is not a competition and um you you just got to get out of that mindset first and stop comparing yourself to other people that's the biggest 
that's the biggest source of self-doubt is is comparing your work to somebody else's you know i would i would hate i would hate for somebody to come by my channel look at my artwork and and just give up like that is the last thing that i would ever want to do um is to to give the impression to somebody that my work is better than theirs and they should just quit um i think there's a lot of people that are subscribed to my channel and I'm subscribed to their channel in turn because they also create art. And if, if you're one of those people, you know that I, I watch your videos when you create something I watch and I, um, encourage you and answer questions and everything. Um, it's one of the things that I love to do. I, I love to see other artists creating their stuff because you might think, you might think, that mm, my work is is better than yours or something like that but i can i can guarantee you that some of the stuff that you are creating i wouldn't be able to do because i haven't developed the skills that you developed to create the, the things that you do so when you when you um are just creating for yourself you're going to develop things that other people can't emulate they can try but um, they, they would have to spend the time that you do in order to create the things that you do. And it's, if you just focus on what you're creating and not comparing it to everybody else's, you're going to create something original that somebody's not going to be able to reproduce. And, and they're going to appreciate your work for the uniqueness that your skills have developed. It's kind of like... It's kind of like the way people look, you know, everybody looks a little bit different. Um, and you can find people that look similar, but there's going to be people that are attracted to that, that group of people. And there's going to be people attracted to this group of people. And there's going to be people that are not attracted to either of them. And your work is kind of like that. Um, there's going to be people that look at it and they're just going to be amazed by it. And there will be people that aren't amazed by it um and you just got to keep creating what you create and yeah it's it's hard to put it into words um in such a short video but uh yeah when i when i saw the question on facebook about getting over self-doubt um yeah i i just I stopped comparing myself to other artists. It's 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 not helpful. It doesn't make you a better artist if you if you do compare yourself to other people. Um, it's just not beneficial. You know, if if you want to get better at art, learn techniques. You know, learn techniques. That's the real key to getting better. Learn perspective. Learn using the grid method. Um, learn different coloring techniques learn color theory if you want i don't know color theory but i mean if that's something that could help you you know just learn techniques and don't worry about what anybody else is doing if, if you're if you're concerning yourself with what other people are creating and whether or not it's better than what you're creating then it's going to be better than what you're creating because you're you're thinking about the wrong things you should be thinking about what what to to make next and you can't you can't focus on such um trivial things as to whether or not you're better and um yeah because arts art is not a competition it's not a race uh we're not competing against each other um a society will convince you that that there is a competition amongst every profession and that's just simply not true that's not that's not true if you do what you do and you do it the best that you can then that's that's all it's worth and anybody else that says differently is an idiot because it's just not what it's about i wouldn't I would have quit art a long time ago if it was if it was a competition because I'm just not interested. 
if anything, it's it's just a battle with yourself because you just gotta you just gotta get over you just gotta get over that stuff and move on. Anyways, um, I hopefully my rambling mess was somewhat coherent, gave you some some insight and some hope on whatever you uh, plan to do in your future. I uh, wish I would have gotten a little bit more of this picture done. But uh, anyways, like I mentioned, I uh, have a new video that will be up this Thursday, so be sure to check that out. Um, I, uh, yeah, so if you're not subscribed already, be sure to subscribe and stuff like that. Um, leave a question if you would like me to get to it uh, next week's video. I'll be happy to answer that for you. Um, and uh, anyways, have a great week and I'll see you next week. Peace.